Ask anybody who knows me and they will confirm for you that I am a huge Miata geek. I've owned five of them in the past 20 years, including this 2004 Mazda Speed Miata. Now I'm out this morning on a really brisk December day in Southern California. And of course, I've got the top down because is there any other way to drive a Miata? Luckily for me, I'm enjoying an early Christmas present from Mazda today. And that comes in the form of the redesigned 2016 MX-5 Miata. What do you say we go for a drive? Put the top down. And I'll try to explain to you why I have an unabashed love and adoration for this car. My love of convertibles started at a very early age. My dad had always had convertibles when he was a young man, and so when I was born, he actually owned a 66 Impala SS. And then my mom wrecked that car, and so then he got a Pontiac Catalina, but the one that I remember best is his 73 Cougar XR7. It was gold with this white vinyl, and I loved riding around in that car with him. And then, of course, nobody made convertibles for a while. And then in the late 1980s, when I was in college, I dated a girl who had a red Jeep CJ7, and we spent an entire summer riding around Western Michigan with the top off and the doors off, and I was just hooked. I, was, I loved how driving that Jeep immersed me in the environment, how you could feel the temperature changes, and how you could smell the different scents of nature around you, and it was just, it was just phenomenal to be driving a car and just be immersed in your surroundings that way. And then I started test driving cars for, for my job in the mid-1990s, and I got a chance to drive a lot of convertibles, but it was a Miata that stole my heart. And here's what happened. At the time, I worked for a company that you now would know as Edmunds.com, and I lived in Phoenix, and Edmunds was based in Los Angeles, and I had three consecutive business trips scheduled back and forth across the desert three weeks in a row, because we were editing some books that we were sending to the publisher. So I land in Burbank Airport, the first trip, and the guy behind the rental car counter, you know, I had an escort reserved or something like that, and the guy behind the rental counter uh, asked me if I wanted something fun to drive. So first he offered me a Mustang, and I would driven Mustangs before, so I said no. Then he offered me a Ford Probe, you remember that car? And I knew it was gonna be a four cylinder with an automatic, so I said no. And then he said, well, I've got a Miata out there. I put 4,000 miles in three weeks on that rented white Miata. I drove it all over Arizona, all over California. I just loved driving that car. And we're talking about a rental with an automatic transmission, mind you. This thing didn't even have a manual gearbox. And I knew that one day I was gonna own one of those. Now, over the course of the next several years, through work, I got to drive a lot of different Miatas. In fact, here's a picture of me behind the wheel of a uh, 1997 M Edition. You can see my hair was a little bit darker at the time, and I didn't weigh quite as much. But it wasn't until Auto Week magazine came out with a cover story of the redesigned Miata that I decided to go ahead and pull the trigger. I really didn't like the blurry spy photos that they had published, the exposed headlights. I really wanted the little pop-ups. So I went to the dealership uh, in my town. Um, I lived in Denver at the time and uh, bought a 1997 Miata STO edition. Uh, Mazda called it still the one. A lot of other people tend to say uh, stuff taken off because it was just like the previous year's M edition, except it had twilight blue mica paint and less equipment on it. But I gotta tell you, I loved that paint color, I loved the tan leather, I loved the silver five-spoke wheels, the little lip spoiler on the back, and I owned number 672 of 1,500 made. They were among the last first-gen Miatas off the line, and I adored that car. I stupidly sold it. 
because of economic concerns after a round of layoffs at work. Never should have done that. Now after the STO edition, I ended up buying uh, the 2001 uh, special edition, the British Racing Green model with the chrome wheels. Then after that I had a red 2003, it was uh, black leather, it had the really nice silver five spoke wheels on it. And then after that I bought my gray Mazda Speed Edition. Now, I just loved the look of that car, I loved the fact that it was the most powerful Miata ever made. And I bought one right off the showroom floor, paid $7,000 under sticker because of the discounts that were happening at the end of the year and I've still got that car today. So it's been half a decade since I've driven a brand new Miata and now we're in the 2016 MX-5 Miata, the Club Edition. It's the performance tune model, it's got a uh, strut brace underneath the hood, it's got a sport tune suspension, it's got different wheels and tires, uh, it's got a sound enhancement system for the exhaust. Now on top of that my test car has got the Brembo brake and BBS wheel and tire package. It's got an appearance package, it's got extra cost soul red paint, uh, a couple of other add-ons, and the sticker price is $34,400 for a Miata. Now, that is staggering, I agree. But if you think about it this way, that what you're basically getting here is a half price Porsche Boxster, suddenly there's all the value in the world associated with this car. Now, I'm not just making things up here to justify the cost of this particular test vehicle. I've driven plenty of Porsche Boxsters and Caymans, and this new Miata is every bit as fun to drive. Now the thing to remember is that this car this year is smaller and lighter than it was before. It weighs 2,332 pounds. And I thought for sure that I was going to be sitting here complaining about how it needs a turbocharger, how it's not fast enough. But the reality is, is that that 155 horsepower gives this car plenty of get up and go. Now we're going 70 miles an hour already. And I wasn't even revving it all the way to seven grand. Now you combine that kind of acceleration with the nimbleness and the athleticism that's inherent in this platform and in this car and you've got a joyful driving experience unlike just about any other especially at the price point. Now I've been driving this car for a week I put over 500 miles on it I've been driving it just like that at almost every chance I've gotten and I'm getting like 29 and a half miles per gallon. The EPA says I should be getting 30. I think that's extraordinary. I mean, especially compared to my Mazda Speed, which is a relative gas guzzler. I usually only get like 22 or 23 out of that thing. So I think that Mazda's made a smart move putting this two liter in here. It's very fuel efficient. It's got plenty of power, makes the car tremendously fun to drive. And I highly recommend the club model for that limited slip differential because when you're powering this thing out of a corner, it really helps to just sling it from S-curve to S-curve. It's fantastic. Now there are a few things about the new Miata that I don't like as much as my Mazda Speed. Number one on that list is I don't like the ball shifter as much as the pistol grip style shifter that's in my car. It's not terrible, mind you. I just don't like the way it feels in my hand as much. I'm also not necessarily a fan of the Miata's electric steering. Don't get me wrong, for electric steering, it's fantastic. But it's not as sharp or as quick as what's in my Mazda Speed. It doesn't feel as alive in my hands. And so, in comparison to my own car, it doesn't quite meet the standard. 
and it's usually only when I'm traveling on a freeway at highway speeds and I want to make some fine-tuned adjustments where that really comes into play. The rest of the time, especially when I'm on a twisty back road, it's not even an issue. One thing that is an issue related to the steering on twisty back roads is in my Mazda speed, my elbows don't hit the center console as I'm steering through turns. In this car, that happens all the time. I also prefer the higher seating position in my Mazda Speed. This car has got a lower center of gravity, the seating position's a little bit lower, and I feel more snug down in this vehicle. In my Miata, I feel like I'm sitting up higher, and I've got a more expansive, broader view of my surroundings, and I feel more immersed in the driving experience. But look, the, in, in terms of the engineering, this new Miata is a clearly superior automobile compared to my own car. I mean, structurally, it's gotta be something like a thousand times stiffer. My Mazda speed's like a wet noodle in terms of cowl shake and rigidity. And this thing is rock solid. That contributes to its brilliant handling. It contributes to the joyful feel you get when you drive this car. And man, I gotta tell you, I am so tempted to just run out and buy one of these things. Seriously, I am totally in love with the new Miata. Do I want a new Miata? Yeah, of course I do. I mean, it's a fantastic automobile. And if I didn't already own this one, I'd already be reconfiguring my family finances to figure out how to make it work. The reason is because these cars are like therapy for me. You put the top down, you get away from your desk, you close the laptop, you go out and you drive, you live a little. They make me feel alive and vibrant and creative. And that's why I love them. But beyond that, my old one, even though it's flawed and it has a dent and it's got an ill-fitting top and there are other problems with it, I've got a lot of memories wrapped up in this car. My parents come here from Michigan to visit on a regular basis and they've taken this car all over California. They've got a lot of memories associated with that. My kids love riding in it. Just taught my teenage daughter how to drive stick in this car. My wife and I like to take rides up Pacific Coast Highway at sunset whenever we get the chance. But most important, I just love driving it. I'm not ready to give it up. And I'll tell you what, if you don't have a Miata yet, I strongly recommend the purchase.